Hey everybody, Mr. Bennett back with a new set of notes or instructions or whatever you want to call them if you're in YouTube land. We are looking at waves. So waves is the new section we're doing in class. Uh, and we've got two main types of waves. And today we're going to focus on mechanical waves. And mechanical waves, if you remember from your reading or from what anything you've done in the past, these guys, they need matter. Okay, the M's go together. Mechanical waves need matter, so uh, they do not travel unless there is matter present. Remember, matter is just the stuff of the universe. Electromagnetic is the other major category of waves, and these ones do not need matter. And that's good because electromagnetic waves, an example would be light. Um, our sun is up in space. There is no matter between the sun and the earth. It's big emptiness. Uh, if electromagnetic waves needed matter, uh, we wouldn't see light, and it would be very cold and dark, and you and I would be very, very dead. We wouldn't be having this conversation. Uh, mechanical waves, though, they need matter to travel. So there are several examples of mechanical waves. Uh, good ones, vibrations in general, right, are a form of waves. If they're, if they're organized, vibration would be a wave. There's no vibrations if there's no matter. A specific type of vibration, I have to sneeze. <coughs> A specific type of vibration is a sound wave. So the sound of my voice is being caused by my vocal cords and the air in between me and the microphone that I have right here um, is vibrating and it's, it's carrying the energy of that wave. Uh, no air or no matter, there's no sound. And we're going to talk later about how mechanical waves travel through different mediums, uh, but they all have the same thing in common. They have to have matter. Okay, that is very, very, very important, which is why I've mentioned it at least three times in the last 30 seconds. So pay attention. If there's matter, if it needs matter, it's a mechanical wave. There's two major kinds of trans, or I'm sorry, not transverse, of mechanical waves. The first being transverse. And this has a very simple definition. The wave is 90 degrees offset from the direction of travel. What do I mean by that? I mean, if my wave is moving on your screen from left to right in that direction, so the direction of the wave is moving away from kind of this axis, then the, direct, the wave itself is 90 degrees offset. So if I take, if this would be zero degrees, then 90 degrees means I'm moving up and down. Or left and right if you're a bird looking down. So the wave motion, right, it has this up and down motion is offset 90 degrees from the wave direction. Now, there's a few ways to label this thing up. I'm going to hit a couple of them. The tops of these waves, so the top there, this is called the crest. And the bottom is called the trough, T-R-O-U-G-H. Uh, and you can look up any diagram, Google transverse wave, and you can label this up yourself. But the top is the crest, the bottom is the trough, two others. We can measure, so from one point on the wave, so let's go from the crest to to the crest, just because it's a nice, easy visual. You can do the same thing trough to trough, it doesn't matter. So the same point on two different waves, that distance is called a wavelength. And that's how we measure the frequency, and that's gonna be a separate video later. So the, uh, the distance between the two points on two different waves, and it has to be the same two points. So you wouldn't measure from here up to the top, you wanna make sure you're from crest to crest. We can also measure, let's do this back in blue. I can measure the height, so I can go from, this is called the rest position at zero. I can measure the height from rest up to the top, this distance, that's called amplitude. And that is the strength of the wave. How strong is that wave? So if you remember my guitar, the amplitude is how hard I'm plucking that string. It's just how, how much energy does that wave carry. Um, and again, look up a, a couple pictures of, of transverse waves. You'll see some of the labels. And go through your vocab list. Make sure you've got it all labeled. The second type of wave, the second major type of mechanical wave, is called a longitudinal wave. L-O-N-G-I-T-U-D-I-N. Longitudinal wave. And the difference between a longitudinal and a transverse is that the wave moves in the same direction as the energy flow, or the, the vibration is in the same direction as the energy. They're parallel to one another. So if you imagine taking a slinky and squeezing it and then releasing it, that's kind of what we get for a longitudinal wave. So the energy of the wave is moving in the same direction as the wave is being carried or the propagation of that wave. Remember with transverse, it's 90 degrees offset. This one is going up and down and the wave moves away from you. This one, the wave is moving away from you. A couple things we can measure or mention. Uh, first of all, the, the compressed areas, right? So this chunk where they're pretty, pretty much 
compressed together. This is called a compression. Okay, they're squeezed together. And then we have these ends, these other areas. Sorry, I should, I should have drawn my arrow somewhere else. This little spot is called a rare faction. You've probably not heard that word before, but it just means stuff is spread out. It's a rare faction. Remember, the, move is, the wave is moving from left to right, and we can also measure wavelengths, so I can take the same spot on a compression. Okay, I can measure from here to here to get a wavelength, so similar to transverse waves, and the size of the rare faction is the amplitude. So with transverse, we look at the height above the rest position. With longitudinal waves, we are looking at, oh, I don't know why I did that. We're looking at the size of the compression. So if this was much thicker, it would be a much stronger wave. Longitudinal waves, these are sound waves. What? So the longer or the larger the sound, the larger the compression. And we're going to take a look at some videos on this. So that's a real quick rundown of the different types of mechanical waves. Make sure you, again, look at the diagrams. The diagrams will help you. Stick with your vocab. Make sure you know what the vocab means. So when I talk about troughs and crests and wavelengths, you know what I'm talking about. Um, if you have questions, leave me a comment, shoot me a text on Remind, or talk to me in class. Thanks.